Hi there, this is Anmesh from Pixim Perfect, and today we have a lot of fun stuff to do in Photoshop. We need to change the background, create the shadow, create the background pattern, and also adjust it according to the curved surface and the perspective. Sounds like a lot, but it's actually not if we just understand the concept. I would never ever recommend you to memorize the steps because we forget it anyway. Just understanding the concept will make you, my friend, the master of compositing. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, a big thanks to our sponsors. This video is brought to you by Creative Market, the world's marketplace for design. If you're looking for high quality assets, Creative Market is a one-stop shop for all your creative needs. For Photoshop users like us, they have an entire section of assets just for Photoshop. Whether it is plugins, actions, presets, brushes, and even layer styles, they have it all. There are several others program-specific assets for Illustrator, InDesign, Procreate, Lightroom, and more. What I personally like the most about Creative Market is the variety of templates that it offers, from Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and whatnot, to even Google Slides, which is something hard to find. Besides beautiful stock photos, you can get high quality 3D assets that you can open in any 3D applications and it's great for composites. All of these assets are created by independent artists like you and I. So whenever you purchase one of these products, you support one of us. Which also means that artists like you and I can also sell our work on Creative Market. Check out their free goods of the week and many other high quality assets by signing up at ilove.creativemarket.com slash piximperfect or simply Click the link in the description. Back in the brilliant world of Photoshop, and if you want to go ahead and download this adorable photo and follow along, you guys already know what to do. Check the links in the description. The first step is separating the subject. So with the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J, we always do this. And let's name this layer Subject Extract. With the help of any of the selection tools selected, at the top, you would see Select and Mask. Just click on that. Now we are inside select and mask. Let's set the view to on black. Since the pet, the dog, is already mostly in white, let's choose on black. What happens is when the opacity is at 100, everything that is not selected will be in absolute black. When the opacity is at zero, everything will show up irrespective of whether it is selected or not. So let's keep it somewhere in the middle at about 73 is good. With the help of the quick selection tool at the top, you can also choose select subject, but I tend to do it manually. Just select the quick selection tool at the top and then just paint over our subject. There you go. So easily we have selected it. Now, if you want to see the missing areas, you can always decrease the opacity and take a look at it and then paint on the areas that you want to be included. Do not paint over the messy areas or the fur areas which are around the edge. All right. We're going to take care of that later. But for now, just paint on the areas which you are definitely sure that this, my friend, is going to be inside the selection. Okay, so it's mostly done. Now let's just go ahead and increase the opacity. Probably 85 is good. Now around the edge, we just need to paint with the Refine Edge tool. The second one, right there. Just select that, make the brush a little bigger, and just paint around the edge. And have a look how easily it just manages that for us. Just paint on the messy areas, not too much outside. Also avoid going little too much inside because that way it's going to also erase areas that you don't want to erase. So don't go too inside or too much outside. The goal is not to create the most accurate selection. The goal is to create a good selection so that after the masking, somebody looking at the composite for the first time should not be able to tell that this is masked out from another image. Once you're satisfied with this, just hit OK. But also before that, make sure that Output to Layer Mask is selected. Just scroll down and just change Output to Layer Mask and hit OK. Now we have the subject extracted. If you turn off the background, you would be able to see that this, my friend, is extracted. But there is, my friend, a problem with this. Guess what it is? Let me just show that to you. So if we just create a solid background, so with the background layer selected, I'm going to click on the Adjustment Layer icon and then we are going to choose solid color. With black, it looks fine. However, if you choose something of a lighter color, look at the edge. See, the edges just don't look right. Why? Because it has taken the original background's gray a little bit into the hair because the hair or the fur is so thin that it is going to take a little bit color of the background. Now, it's a great thing that it did not originally have a green background. It would be a pain in the neck to remove the green fringes. So I would personally always highly recommend that for still photos, 
please always prefer a gray background for compositing or masking purposes while photographing your subjects. I'm gonna choose a hex code, CD201F. Hit OK. The edges look OK, but some areas like this, it just doesn't look right. So we need to take care of the halos. And how can we do that? With the topmost layer selected, let's create one more layer at the top by clicking on the plus button right there. Now, take the clone stamp tool. Make sure sample current and below is selected. Opacity, flow, both at 100. And make sure your brush is soft. Hardness zero or just simply choose the soft round brush. Now, make the brush a little smaller. And let's start from right here. We will hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample, and then paint around the edge. But you know, it's leaking, right? We want to limit it just to the edge. And the way we do that is by holding the Alt key or the Option key and click on the line between these two layers. This creates a clipping mask. Whatever you do now, even if it is painting like crazy with the brush tool and then taking any color, and if we paint here, it will be limited just to the layer, the area of the layer beneath it. Now let's get back to the clone stamp tool and take a sample and paint. Take a sample from the inside by holding the Alt key or the Option key and paint on the outside. Take a sample from the inside, paint on the outside. All right, we won't be using that extreme red color in the background, but I just wanted to show you why we need to fill up the halos. Let's change the background by double clicking on the symbol and change it to something like dark gray, where you can see what you're doing properly without straining your eyes with red. Let's get back to layer one, or let's just simply name it Halo Fill. Fun, right? Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample, and paint over the edge. You can keep changing the background to other colors to check for the halos. Let's get back to Halo Fill. Also, you can use the brush tool, a simple brush tool, and then you can sample the colors and paint around the edges. Let's get back to the Clone Stamp tool and do some of these areas. Now, anytime you feel like you have done a mistake, simple, just take the Eraser tool and simply erase that particular area in the Halo Fill. All of this is non-destructive, just keep that in mind. All right, it's mostly done. You can take more time to even clean it up even more. Now, the next step is after we fill up the halos, let's have a look at the before and after. So here's the before. You can see the edges not clearly defined and we can see a gray halo over there. If we just simply turn it on, it takes care of that. The next thing we need to do is to clean up the mask. So hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask of the subject extracted. Now, here you will see there are or there might be some discrepancies. You can take the brush, but why does the foreground color change the blend mode to overlay? What that will do, it will only paint on the areas which are closer to white and not paint on the areas which are black. So no matter how much I paint over here, it just won't paint it. However, if I paint over here, see, it's filling up those areas. So let's fill up some areas which are left out, like these areas. Also, the same will happen with black. If you press X and make foreground color black, it will paint on the areas which are closer to black and not on the white areas no matter how much I try over there. Let's decrease the flow to about 30% and then paint. All right, now this looks fine to me. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the mask to bring the subject back. Now at the bottom when I look at the legs, it just doesn't feel right. See some areas were left out? So hold the Shift key and click on the mask again and take the brush and simply paint those areas back in by painting with white in these areas. Now, keep in mind the blend mode is overlay. We need to change it back to normal. All right, that looks nice. Let's zoom out and here we are. Now that we have extracted the subject, the next step is creating the shadow and depth. Let's start with creating the shadow. First of all, let's choose a desirable background. Double click in here on the symbol of the solid color adjustment layer and let's choose CD201F as the hex code. This is kind of a lighter red color. I like that nice red. Hit OK. This image, the original image, if you have a close look, has a beautiful shadow already. We don't need to create the shadow from scratch. We can actually use this shadow. And the way to do that is simple. With the background layer selected, make a copy by pressing Ctrl or Command J. And let's name this shadow. Let's place it 
above the color fill layer. Now, what is the blend mode which darkens stuff? Multiply, right? So let's change the blend mode of the shadow layer from normal to multiply. There we go. It already creates a beautiful shadow. If you want to keep it this way, you are most welcome. But I want the shadow to be limited just to this area. And the way to do that is simple. Masks. Hold the Alt key on the Option key and click on the Mask button. This creates a negative mask. Now take the brush, white as the foreground color. You can decrease the flow to somewhere around 30%. And then just start painting with white right over here. See that? All of the other areas are left out. But just that area is darkened. Now I'm doing extra on purpose so that we can erase that later. All right, this is nice. Press X. Now black is the foreground color. Flow, you can decrease it to 10%. And now let's paint on the area slowly and gradually and take them away. Take a bigger, larger brush. We want this to be very soft. This looks nice. Now one other treatment that you can do here is with the help of the curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. We want it to be limited just to the shadow. And how do we do that again? We just did it a while ago. Clipping mask, right? Now the other way to create a clipping mask is just clicking on this button of the adjustment layer properties. Now you want to make bright areas brighter so that these lighter areas don't darken stuff. So let's take this slider off the right to the left. See how it's going away nice and smooth. I like that. You're going to keep it at that and have a look. Here's the before, here's the after. Now it's more smoother. The transition is even better. You can go back to the mask and redefine it if you want to. If you want to take away some of these areas, you can do that. But to me, this looks natural and nice. Now this picture looks beautiful when zoomed out. However, if you zoom in closer to the shadows, you will see there's a little bit of red around the edge, even when the shadow is dark. You know why that is happening? Because even in the shadow layer, if I turn off the subject extracted, there is that dog. It is just not the shadow. It is the dog as well. So the white area or the bright fur of the dog is creating that edge. So how do we tackle that? It's simple. Don't worry about it. Just above the curves adjustment layer or under the subject extracted, let's create a brand new layer. And you can name this shadow two. All right, now take the brush, black as the foreground color. So you can press D to set it to default, which is black and white. And then you can set the flow to about 10 or 5%. So I'm gonna leave it at 10 in the beginning. Now simply take the brush and paint around the edges with black. See, it's gonna take care of that. And also it's going to make the shadow a little darker, which is always welcome. We took care of that that easily. All right. Now that looks nice. If you want to soften stuff up, you can. It's totally up to you. You can decrease the opacity if you wish to. So let's increase the opacity just to the point where it totally takes it away. About 80% looks fine to me. So let's have a look. Here's the before. Here's the after, just a little bit of the shadow. If you think it's too much, you can always take the eraser and erase it from the top just a little bit. There you go, it looks beautiful. Now it's time for us to create the depth because with that, this looks absolutely flat. Have a look at the original image. Look at the back. This area is a little darker and the surface on which the dog is standing on, it's brighter and we can use this exact depth image right there, but without the dog because we don't want the dog to disturb the depth. So how do we cover the dog or remove the dog? It's pretty simple. First of all, let's turn on everything. With the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J. And we can actually name this depth. Let's make a selection of the dog. But do we have to do that again? No, we already have one. So remember the subject extracted, we have a selection of the dog. So hold the Ctrl or Command and click on the mask. This creates the selection again, but we want the selection to be a little bit on the outside. So what do we do? Just expand it. Let's go to select, modify, and then expand. And this time we're going to choose about 40, 40 pixels. That looks about right. But however, some of these areas might be left out as you can see. So hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the eye of the depth just to make sure everything is selected. As you can see, not everything is selected. So with the help of the lasso tool right there, simple, you can hold the shift key, the lasso tool plus will show up and just make sure 
all of these areas are selected and nothing is left out. Okay, that's nice. Not even a single hair here and there. All of the fur. We could have made a selection from manually itself. That would have been better. But anyway, once you have made sure that everything is selected and not a single part of this dog is left out, we can go to edit, fill, and then choose content aware or in the later versions of Photoshop, you can directly go to content aware fill. This creates a whole new dialog box just for the content aware. This did a pretty good job. Some areas were left out, but that's totally fine. You can leave it at default or play with these settings, but I'm gonna leave it at that and choose output to current layer. Hit okay, that looks fine. Some of these areas we can cover up with the help of the clone stamp tool or the healing brush tool. So we're gonna choose the regular healing brush tool and hold the Alt key or the Option key to sample and paint over these areas. Just clean up a little bit here and there. No worries. Now we will use this for depth. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the eye again to turn everything back on. Now place the depth above the color fill, okay? And change the blend mode from normal to multiply. See? the depth that we create with it, it's amazing. So let's decrease the opacity, it's kind of too much. So we will have just a little bit of it available right here. You can also try keeping the depth above the curves, in the shadow right there, but it won't make much of a difference. Now that we have placed the depth, let's apply some curves to it. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Now we only wanna apply it to the depth. So click on this button right there, create clipping mask button, and now you can play with this. All right. You can make the shadows a little brighter if you want to, but I'm going to leave it at that. Now, let's choose depth and control the opacity. I'm going to keep it at about 85. 85 looks nice. What about the shadow? Let's choose the shadow and control the opacity of the shadow. 90 looks nice for the shadow. Now, there is one problem. The depth is adding to the shadow and the shadow is also adding to the shadow. So the way to control that is, first of all, let's choose the depth, create a mask, and then take the brush and erase the shadow areas. With black as the foreground color, just paint right here. Simple stuff, right there, gone. Now paint back in certain areas with white, and there you go. Also, some of you might think this might be the solution, that is just simply turn off the mask of the shadow. That also can create some nice depth, but that will not give you control over this area at the back. You want to have separate control over that area and that is why we created the depth layer so that we can control how dark or bright it's going to be irrespective of the personal shadow of the dog. So let's keep it at about 95 and then we can control the shadow independently. We can make it a little more darker at about at 100%. Now that we have done with the extraction, the shadow and the depth, the third step would be creating the background pattern. And we're going to create a very beautiful polka dot pattern. So this is going to be a pattern file in Photoshop, just like an infinite pattern that never ends. And the way to create that is pretty simple. First of all, let's create a brand new document. Let's go to file, new, and then we can choose 4000 by 4000. We're just going to type in 4000 width and 4000 height, all right? A brand new document. Now inside of that new document, let's draw in some guides. If you cannot see these rulers, press Ctrl or Command R, the rulers show up and just draw in some guides in the form of a rectangle, all right? Doesn't have to be this perfect measurement. You, my friend, are creating the pattern. You can create it in any way you want. We will choose the ellipse tool, and then from the middle, just drag an ellipse. You can hold the Shift key to maintain the proportions, and as you drag, if you hold the Alt key, it will be drawn from the center, okay? Now we can color this whatever we want, so let's color this black. Choose the fill to black and no strokes. Control or Command T to control the size. Let's make it a little bigger, something like that. Now hit enter or return and we want to place it just in the center of these two crossings. Just make sure when you go to view, snap is checked. Also, you can press Control or Command T and as you zoom in, you make sure that the anchor point is in the middle so that no matter how much you zoom in, the anchor point should be in the middle. That's perfect. Now, hold the Alt key or the Option key and copy it. Just drag it. 
it should snap in right there in the middle of that cross. Let's do that one more time. Okay, let's do that even one more time. There you go. And one for the middle as well. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and place it in the middle. Now it might not be the perfect middle. So how to center it? Simple. Hold the Control or Command. Select the ellipse right there. Now you hold the Shift key and the Control together. This ellipse is also selected. That way you select all of the four ellipses on the side, the circles on the side. Now you choose the middle layer. Once the middle ellipse is selected, with the selection of all of the four ellipses around it active, we can just simply choose the Move tool right there and center it by clicking on this button right there and then clicking on this button. Now it is centered. Press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Now you can choose the Rectangular Marquee tool and also you can turn off the background layer to keep it transparent and drag a rectangle along the rectangle you created with the guide. So now we have that rectangle. Let's go to edit and then define pattern. Let's name this polka.pix. Hit OK. All right. Let's get back to our original image. Just below all the shadows that we created and just above the red background, we will create a pattern. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose pattern. It should load up the polka dot. You can decrease the scale just like so. So I'm going to keep it at about 20 for now and once you're satisfied just hit OK. Now we want this to be white so click on the adjustment layer icon choose solid color and choose white hit OK and create a clipping mask by holding the alt key or the option key and click on the line between these two lists. That way the polka dots are white and it looks beautiful but still something looks off. Of course we need to adjust the polka dots according to the perspective and for that we will choose the pattern fill layer and hold the control or command choose the color fill layer right click on it and choose convert to smart object now we can stretch it warp it in any which way we want press control or command t right click on it and then choose warp now keep in mind we are using the later versions of photoshop this is photoshop cc 2020 this has got some amazing warp controls and custom splitting options so we're going to choose a horizontal split okay and split it from the place where the curve starts right there now just zoom out and stretch it just like this similarly from the other side now adjust it accordingly now still the drapery looks too curved no problem just click on this point and adjust the handle accordingly similarly adjust the handle on the other side just like a real carpet if I roll out a carpet to you, how would it look? Just this way, right? Just this way, the way the warp is designed. Now to make the drapery look even more realistic, we can just simply zoom in and click on one of these points and bend it just a little bit. Like a real drapery. Now zoom out. This looks perfect. Now you can adjust it as much as you want. I'm going to show you my final result right now. Photoshop is lagging, so I'm going to leave it to that. Hit enter or return. This looks beautiful as is. Now let's zoom in. Now when you warp, some areas might create a little gap. No problem. Press Ctrl or Command T and we can make it a little bigger. Now keep in mind, you can always go back to the warp by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Right click on it and then simply choose Warp. Simple. And you can adjust anything you want. Now I'm going to leave it at that. Hit Enter or Return. Once you're satisfied, now as you can see, this my friend looks wonderful. Now it's time for us to do some finishing touches and that is the fourth and the last step. Now I ask you to answer that there is something very wrong with this composite. And it's not one of the little mistakes that I did here and there regarding the edge or the shadow, but there is something very wrong about this composite right now. I'm just gonna zoom in for you, have a look at it. What is wrong? Have a close look at the image and how this image was taken with the camera. This image has a very shallow depth of field. So shallow that even the tail is blurred out. Eyes are in focus and even the legs are a little blurred out. But look at the background now. The background is so sharp. How can that be? 
so we need to add a little blur to that as well. So with the color fill 2 or whatever layer where the polka dots selected, just name this polka dots and let's go to filter, blur gallery, tilt, shift. Bring the middle point right where the focus is, right here. Okay. And as you move backwards, the focus goes away. So you can actually increase it to about 33. That looks fine. So right here, the blur is zero and gradually it increases to 33 and beyond this dotted line, it is 33. Now let's zoom in and check. Yes, that value looks nice to me. We can go ahead and always increase it up a notch and we can always change 35 looks fine. Hit OK. Now that suits a lot. Also, these areas are very sharp as well. So we need to add an overall blur by going to filter, blur, and then just an overall Gaussian blur on top of it. A blur of six, what do you feel? Six looks nice. And there you go. I played with the warp and the masks a little bit and here my friend is the final result. So we did a lot of things in today's tutorial, but all of this, all of whatever we did, from changing the background to creating the shadow, and then creating the patterns and all of that can be separated into four simple steps. First is extracting the subject. Now, when you extract the subject, a lot of problems can occur, like halos around the edge. We can easily fill that by creating a brand new layer, clip it, and then fill it with the brush tool or the clone stamp tool. Second thing we did, or the second step would be, creating the shadow. And most of the times we have the original shadow and we don't have to create a shadow from scratch. We can actually use that original shadow by using the multiply blend mode and also some adjustment layers to set it up. In this example, particularly, we wanted the depth from the original image. So we removed the dog from it and used it as a depth with the multiply blend mode. And after that, we created a fun pattern. Now you can create your own pattern with flowers, lots of crazy things you can do. You can also download patterns from the internet. Creative Market, our sponsor, has amazing patterns that you can try on. And after creating the pattern, we added it just below the shadow so that the shadows also fall on the pattern. And at the end, do not forget the depth of field. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys again in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.